Hey folks, my name is Dave. Welcome to our shop back here at NTD Racing. You ever had one of those projects where you just kind of get stalled out and you're like, God, oh, man, I just can't get back into the project. And you always need just one of those pick me up days where something happens and you see the finished product. <laughs> it's kind of further away, but you still see what it could be. And it just gets you energized and backed into it. That is what this day is all about. But before we get to that, let me ask you to hit that like and subscribe button, ring the bell for notification of future episodes, leave a comment, that always helps us out. But what I'm gonna show you today is how I'm gonna take all of the parts that we've got. We, got, we took apart that old truck, we just got the body from Fiberworks. Today we're gonna assemble the body from Fiberworks, we're gonna clean up all these parts and I'm gonna show you what we got, what we're gonna use, and what we end up getting rid of and we can't use for this build. One last thing, again, we got the Mint 400. It's about like two weeks away for us right now, and we are part of the Military Challenge. Don't know what that is? Check out our link on ntdracing.com. There's a little button down there that says donate now. You don't have to donate, but it'll give you information about what we're doing and how we're trying to raise money for Folds of Honor, our partners, and they do great work for really deserving families. And uh, I invite you to go to our page, check it out and read. And if you got like $5, $10, whatever it is. If you're a business and you got some more money, we sure would appreciate you partnering with us to help these very deserving families. Let's go ahead, clean some parts, put the body together, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do. You get a good idea of the scope of work we got over the next about nine months before the Baja 1000. Man, I hate cleaning parts, but you know what? For a little boy sometimes, getting out there using a pressure washer or turning a wrench with their dad is just a, a great thing to do. And you know, one of the primary reasons that I wanted to build this team, I have this garage and I do all this work is because eventually, you know, as he gets older and different things kind of compete for his attention, whether it be drugs or whatever, getting in trouble, I want him to think, man, I want to hang out with my dad because he's doing cool stuff and I want to be a desert racer and I want to build race trucks. And that's, and that's really why I do this. And, uh, and I tell you, what, I love working with him. All right, well, much props to the guys at Fiberworks. I think they really made some quality stuff. I built years ago a card called a GTM by Factory 5, which had, they had a great community. I love Factory 5, but their, their fiberglass left a little bit to be desired, and this was really good. But there was no instructions that came with this. You know, how do you put one of these together? And I, I found that if I started with the roof, and then from there, the doors, and then put the hood on and support that, and then the fenders, that ended up working out the best for me. Uh, and it'll be the whole theme for how I build this car underneath the body. All right, well, here is Honcho 2, Honcho X Max, Lefty, I don't know. I just love it. I can't believe after being a car builder and a builder and a fabricator for so long that eventually I'm gonna have something that's driving and not just a wood chassis. Something that looks like this in my shop is just unbelievable to me. What do we got have here? This is the Fiberworks Ford Raptor Trophy Truck Body, which I really love the way that it looks. It'll be sitting on a custom chassis, custom suspension, Chevrolet Silverado 2500 HD engine, transmission, rear axle, brakes, and those kinds of things. And then these things are just awesome. The Milestar Patagonia Mud Terrain Black Labels. These are 40 13.5 R17s. They're massive tires. And I just can't wait to get these things driving. We were already driving with these tires on Honcho, and they're like big paddle wheels in the sand. They just sling sand and dirt and silt and all those kinds of things. So we are really excited to be running these tires on both of our race trucks. And I can't wait to try this thing out in Baja. Maybe we'll finally finish that, that race. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got going behind the truck here. So uh, you watched the, me build this thing. So I built the whole cage underneath in wood. And why was that important? I kind of need to get some starting points for this build. You know, where where is everything dimensioned? And since I haven't done one of these before, you kind of have to have it together to figure out, you know, how are you gonna fit everything underneath here? And the really critical part here, I think, is kind of gonna, have, there's a lot of room for engine and those kinds of things. Uh, but big picture, we're gonna try to put the engine as far forward as we possibly can. Uh, with the steering and all that, so we're going to dimension that in here. But the roll cage is going to be tough to get into here. You can see we'll need to figure out, and we'll start using our Bentec software to figure out how the tubes come up and then travel throughout the the, um, the body here. But the other important part here is like, where does it start? Where does the puzzle start? And I think for us, it will start with the roof mounting to the top of the roll cage, and then the doors coming underneath and roll, you know, mounting to the bottom of the uh, the roll cage, and then the front. Uh, and the rear fenders and the hood and all that kind of stuff, those just kind of connect on either to the uh, cab section and, or the, the roll cage. And we'll have some you know pieces that come out and connect those things to the roll cage. 
All right, so what is the next step for this thing? So what the, we're gonna do next is we're gonna take the tires off and we're gonna start dimensioning things. First, I'm gonna put some tires on the front. I'm gonna just put the truck here. I'm gonna put the tires on left and right and I just wanna see how it looks and how it sits because ultimately this thing is just a traveling billboard. So the tires have gotta look right as far as how they sit underneath the, uh, the body. And then we'll put the tires on the rear axle and we'll see how wide the rear axle is. And I hope they'll be within a couple of inches of each other so you don't have a really wide front end and a narrow rear end or something like that. Uh, from there, we start putting all that information into our Bentec software, and we start to build this roll cage on computer-aided design. We obviously built Honchel's roll cage using their software, and you can go back and check out our videos on how we built that roll cage. Let me go ahead and show you some of the other parts we're going to be using, some of the parts we got rid of. Uh, and then also, you know, we're getting Honcho ready for the, the uh, Min 400. I'm going to show you some of the parts we got laid out. I just got done running Honcho and rewiring some of the electrical. I'll show you that because that was kind of interesting. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get to those parts. All right, I think this is just about the look that I am going for where the tires are just sitting just slightly outside the body, but still within the fender on the back backside. I think this is going to be a really good look. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just drop the dimensions down and mark them right onto the floor. I'll measure the distance from the floor. And then as I start to build these things and design the suspension, I'll be using those dimensions to, uh, to build the suspension arms. The distance between the two front tires, 91 inches. That will be how wide it's gonna be, about eight inches more than Honcho. We have to get a wider trailer or at least make the fenders drive over on our trailer. Let's compare that to our rear axle with tires on it. And this gives you a really good look of just how big those Patagonia 40 13.5 R17 Patagonia mud train black label tires are. They are just beefy. So what we're doing on this axle, this is a 14 bolt axle. Right now it's just got an open differential inside there. We'll be replacing that with a spool and 538 gears. Coming out here, one of the issues that I had, and I think one of the problems uh, with ordering that truck or using the do donor truck that I did is that was a 2013 and they changed the bolt pattern on the 2013 from the 2010 it's a 8 by 6.5 versus i think a 8 by 180 millimeters or something like that and so i wanted to run the same wheels just in case we needed to swap a, a wheel from honcho over to honcho 2 or lefty or whatever it is uh, i wanted to have the same wheels so what i did is i put some two inch spacers in there it made our brake space out just a little bit but i think once it's under the truck it will look normal for the most part However, now when I measure these things outside to outside, they are 90 inches. So just about one inch off what I wanted from the front. So I think it's going to look perfect and, and the dimensions will all look just fine. Some of the things we'll be doing to this axle, um, I took off the uh, anti-skid speed sensors that were on there. I just cut those things off and use that there as a dust cover. We'll be cutting all these perches off with the angle grinder, cleaning up this two, which I think is bigger than the other two from the 2010 Silverado. In fact, I think there's just a few changes on here on the 14 volt pumpkin also it looks like from the uh, the 2010 but we'll be cutting all those off and then we'll be putting a truss across here and the truss will have some changes but will look pretty much the same as what we had on honcho i think the engine looks pretty good now that we've just put a little bit of pressure washing to it it is a great looking motor and i think it's going to do really good in the truck again another part of having a 2013 versus a 2010 and to be honest with you, if I could go back, I'd get a 2010 because right now I have the E78 ECU with this one. I'd rather have the E38. It works a little bit uh, better. And I got to figure out some stuff like running fans and those kind of things. Since this thing sends out what's called a pop pulse width modulation as opposed to just like a, a ground on and ground off signal to the fans. Anyways, I will be resolving that and you'll see me making videos uh, for that. Some interesting things about this engine though is that when we pulled the registration that they left in the glove box of the truck, it was registered to a glass company, which I think is pretty cool because that means that if you're driving around with a whole bunch of glass on the back of your work truck, you're not flooring it, you're not you know coming to hard stops, you're not doing all those things that damage engines. So I think that this engine is going to be Totally cherry it has 129,000 miles in it. I bet you it drives like it's almost brand new. Anyways, we will get to work on that engine, especially this wiring harness where we're going to take the whole loom off and we're going to go ahead and re-wicker the wire such that the ECU can come out the back a couple feet because that ECU will be put into the cockpit with the driver and the navigator to protect it from heat and dust and all those kinds of things during the race. 
Here are the final parts that came off that 2013 Silverado that we will be using. Let me start with the easy one over here and that will be the power steering box. And if you go back to my playlist, you can see the video of me using the, the box off the 2010 and the 2013 is just a little bit different. And one of the reasons is it's different is if you can see down here is that these flanges that will be where the bolts mount, they actually sit flush with this thing on the ground. But the other one, you, I had to build spacers because it wasn't the, the, the body of it came down lower than these mounting flanges. And so it, that made it more difficult. This one will be easier. I think it'll be more durable, the mount that I'll make for this thing. Besides that, I do plan on using these same U-joints uh, that came off of the, uh, the truck. And I'll be using all this stuff to connect it up to the steering wheel. Again, U-joints and all that kind of stuff, you could throw this stuff away. I will reuse it and save, I don't know, a hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks. I basically consider all this stuff free uh, as I go to make the next you know, steering system for our long travel suspension. I will also use, if I can get this thing off, is I will also use this nub of a pitman arm. I'm gonna grind this thing down into a nice shiny pitman arm nub and then I will make a whole new uh, pitman arm which puts three quarter inch rod ends into double shear. It makes a really durable uh, steering system. And if you're interested in how I do that, you can check out my other video or I'll make another video of me doing that again. So maybe there's some better information there. We'll also be using parts of the old air box. What I end up doing with this is I take this part which holds our mass airflow sensor and I cut it right here. And I use it so I can put one uh, you know, hose on to here to our air cleaner. And then this side will go to the throttle body. So I still use this piece just basically as a part that holds the uh, mass airflow sensor. And then I think this is a temperature sensor also, and I'll have to find a way. I'll probably just cut that off and then glue it into our, uh, our air box there. So that'll be pretty good. The other part of this thing, which, which kind of became, again, the, one of the other things I didn't like about having a 2013 as opposed to a 2010 Silverado 2500 HD are the brakes. And here are the differences. You can kind of see just some really subtle differences between the two brakes. I bought these. These are 2010 brakes. These are 2013 brakes. And the reason, again, I'm changing, I was mixing some parts around is because you can see in here, this is the hub bearing for a 2010 and I got those because I wanted again to use the bolts, the bolt pattern from that 2010 so I could use the same wheels. Well, when I did that, you know, it's a little bit different. So I had to get a new brake rotor. Well, when I got a new brake rotor, as you can see, I just figured that I could be able to use the 2010 brake rotor with the 2013 brakes. But if you look down here, you can see this part down here sticks out and interferes with the wheels that I will be using. And if you compare that over to this one right here, which is the brake off the 2010, you can see it's a little bit more recessed and will not interfere with the wheel. Another part, and that just kind of speaks to the way that I design wheels, is the backside here and the bolt pattern uh, and how it interfaces with the brakes. You can kind of see the four bolts here, and these are what bolt the, the hub bearing to our spindles. I run our sp the spindles kind of vertically going this way with one uniball mounted pretty much centered right here on the hub and the other uniball about you know 16 inches to the left here. It would obviously be vertical. But what you can see is that this brake caliper has a recess here and that allows for this bolt to go all the way in and you can get to that bolt while it's on the spindle. And that is why I basically will use this brake caliper. So I had to go basically all uh, 2010 parts with the hub bearing, the caliper, uh, sorry, the caliper and the brake disc. So I had to replace all those things. Some other things I'm doing, um, I've been trying to learn, I'm reading up on how to tune engines and I will plan on, you know, probably later on in the year, I'll probably make a video on just how this guy tunes engines without a dyno. I don't have money to have a dyno, but I don't want to go spend money to, or wait for a dyno, look for a dyno, those kinds of things. So can I tune my own engine? This is a wide band O2 sensor and I'm getting smart. I'm reading some stuff. I will provide all those links for you uh, later on also, and maybe some reference material in case you want to do the same thing um, for your engine. Anyway, those are the things that we'll be using on Lefty Honcho 2 X Max. You name it. Like I said, Honcho is also getting ready for the Mint 400 about two weeks away. You can see the Patagonia mud trains on these also. These are 37s versus the 40s over there for Lefty. Everything is looking really good. In fact, there wasn't much left to do after the Baja 1000. It was still a pretty good truck. A couple modifications. One of the funny ones is let's go ahead and I'll show you what I was doing 
on the electrical for the power uh, for the uh, electric fans in the back. So looking back here at the wiring of the fans, you can see what happened when the truck sat idling for hours with the fans going, it melted both of the fuses down completely. So much so I couldn't get the fuse parts out of there. So what I did is I just rewired to all of the relays and then I took these 10 gauge wires with some 40 amp fuses going out here. I Now I know 40 amp fuses a lot for these fans and it might burn them down, but you know what? Uh, you might burn down a fan or whatever in racing. Um, it shouldn't cause a fire back here or something like that. But uh, there you go. There's hopefully the fix and you can see my heat shrink. It was too small I and I couldn't fit it over here. So I gotta get some electrical tape. The electrical tape job of shame there because I couldn't make my heat shrink work, but uh, the junction should work just fine. So honcho is pretty much buttoned up. I need to do a little bit of wiring on the front lights. And besides that, I'm just kind of organizing some of the tools and we've gotten pretty good at uh, bringing just the right amount of tools and not bringing too much. We've kind of cut down some tool kits and all that, but this is what fits all inside of this cooler. One thing we're trying to get better at, and I will show you some reviews of stuff that we will be using. Some things we don't have here yet, I think are pr some pretty exciting alternatives to bringing a winch inside the truck, but we do have a snatch rope here to get the thing out. Uh, these are some blocks that turn the uh, wheels into some paddles. We'll test those things out. I don't want to recommend anything until I, I test it. My buddy Bear is about to make a video on how to make these things. They were totally key for getting Honcho out when we were in the Baja 1000, but be more on that later. Over here, some other cool stuff. This is Mr. Spreckles. Literally one of my favorite videos to, uh, to make. If you haven't seen that, check out the video in our playlist of Mr. Spreckles, the rail car that we made. I swear I'm still a 10 year old. All right, well, as you can see, this is a pretty exciting part in this whole build where we start to get all the parts, and then now we get to put them together. So that's what you can expect in the next couple of videos. I got two things happening at the same time. I need to start designing that roll cage with the Bentec software, and we also needed to get into the Fusion 360, get the Crossfire XR to work, and start making the suspension parts. A lot of great content coming up. I hope you will decide to join us for that. Please consider hitting the like and subscribe below, ringing the bell for notification of future episodes, and leaving a comment. All those things definitely help us out, and we do appreciate it. Once again, military challenge coming up. Check us out on NTD Racing dot com hit the donate now button and you can read about it see if you like it i hope that you will choose to join our team in operation honcho and help out some really deserving families we'll see you next week take care of yourself